They are the masters and puppets of fate. They are the lords and servants of sorcery. Today, Thousand Sons Codex Review. Anvil of War! Review roll out! Hi guys, I'm here with a Codex Review for the Thousand Sons. I'd like to start off by thanking our sponsor, Red Dragon, for providing this codex to us. We really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content and to see more of it. And with all that out of the way, let's hit the table. All right, so here we are with the codex in front of us. We'll go ahead and open it up to our page of spooky faces. We'll flip over. Starting off with a little bit of introductory lore into the Thousand Sons and their legion. Some nice artwork there as well. Good new, uh, new image of Magnus the Red with a little bit of explanation on the lore of the Primarch, the demon Primarch of the Thousand Sons. A little bit on Armin, the chief librarian. Touching on uh, the rubric of Armin, how he turned all of his fellow legionnaires into mindless automatons. Touching on the Legion of Sorterius, some of the ruling cabals of the Planet of Sorcerers. I like this book because it touches a little bit more on the uh, the great cults that were introduced uh, in Eighth Edition. It flushes out the lore of them uh, more, which is interesting to see. And in a couple pages here, it uh, it shows some of the the leaders of these great cults. And gives you a really good um, basis to make some potential conversions. I'd really like to see people make make these guys on the tabletop, especially right here, the Coven of Three. This is one of my favorites. Um, I'd love to. I, I really want to make like a Demon Prince or something with these three guys, and maybe some floating in the air or something like that. I think it could be really cool. Um, but it's very interesting, just kind of getting that more backstory into the unique elements of each of the great cults. Some pictures of the models. Uh, I got a nice Chaos Rhino there. I think those are going to be really good. You'll find out why later. Really good inclusion into any army. Some more of the Zangors that are coming back. Zangor Shamans and the Rubric Marines. There's Magnus himself in all his glory. Some exalted sorcerers. That's a great kit as well. Highly recommend. Any any Thousand Suns player needs to buy an exalted sorcerer kit. The conversion potential is amazing. Then we have a great spread here of the Thousand Suns battling the Space Wolves. Got a nice Mutilith Vortex beast up here. And various demon engines in the back. Right. So moving on to some of the rules, um, you know, a lot of different rules uh, that were introduced in this in this edition. A um, little bit of talk of uh, rolling a d33. Uh, that'll come in later for your um, picking your psychic powers. If you want to choose them randomly, you can roll a d d33. Roll two d3s, one after the other. The first dice result determines your tens, and the second one your units. For example, if you rolled two d3s, and the first result was a two, and the second one was a one, then the d33 result is a 21. Kind of an interesting way to pick powers. Um, here's a little bit on the combat patrol. and uh, so This is what we, I guess we can expect inside of the new uh, book, or the new box that will come out. Uh, it's going to include the new Infernal Master, which is a great new HQ selection. Uh, we've also got some secondaries um, to play in your match point games. Uh, my personal favorite is Warpcraft. Uh, I think this is a pretty cool one. It's a warp charge value of 4 uh, that you can activate on an objective. And it'll give you 3 victory points each time it, you complete the action with a unit in your army. Uh, I really like this one because, as you'll see later, there's a lot of interesting abilities and upgrades you can give to your units that will let them take a psychic action, 
but also allow them to participate in other phases, such as also casting a psychic power or even shooting later on in the phase after they take that action, which is good because that unit doesn't have to just sit out of the battle, the battle round. Uh, so going over the different detachment abilities, um, Brotherhood of Sorcerers uh, is the Legion-wide ability that was, was granted. Uh, it's changed a little bit. Previous edition was it would add 6 inches to all of your psychic powers, giving you kind of a greater reach. Um, that 24-inch smite was really cool. Uh, that's been taken away, uh, but it's been replaced with something that I think is maybe a little more powerful. Um, you get an army-wide plus one to psychic test taken. Um, that can be really great when you consider that, you know, every rubric marine squad is led by a psyker, so you're getting that plus one to cast. You know, we lost the ability to always cast smites without having to get that plus one to cast uh, negative effect that, that other armies had to deal with. So now Thousand Suns, you know, our smites are the same as anyone else's, but uh, we do have that plus one to cast. So after our first... You know, it's going to be a, a little bit easier to cast, a little bit of help. And uh, they're also coming back with the 5 plus invuln for anything that has the Arcana Astartes or Zangor keyword. Uh, they're going to get that 5 up invuln. We've also got um, two other rules. So one, Mere Servants. So you basically cannot include more cultists than you do Rubric Marines or Scarab Occult Terminators. And you can't... Uh, include more Bray units, which are Zangors, than Scarab Occult Terminators or Rubric Marines. Um, so that's just a little bit in terms of limiting the Zangor spam that can take place there. Jealous Tyrant, uh, that's definitely a big attempt for them to cut down on the Demon Prince uh, meta that you saw a lot of in previous edition. Where people would be running, you know, two or three demon princes from Thousand Suns. So you're now limited to having one demon prince only per detachment. Um, so if you're running a pure Thousand Suns army, you can, in theory, have multiple demon princes as long as they're at the head of separate detachments. But from now on, you're, most of the time, I feel like you're probably only going to see one, one demon prince at a time. You've also got this very interesting upgrade section called Legion Command. This is where you can upgrade characters or uh, unit sergeants, the aspiring sorcerers, um, giving them extra abilities. Uh, I touched on this a little bit before, but one of my favorite ones is uh, Ardent Automata. And right here, so that's basically upgrading a Rubric Marine or Scarab Occult Sorcerer. And it lets them shoot. The unit can also shoot while also performing an action, which is great. Um, another one you can give, I love to give this to a Sorcerer and Terminator armor, Loyal Thrall. You can attempt to cast a Psychic Power in the same turn that you attempted a Psychic Action. So you can put him on an objective to warp ground, for example, to get those three points, while also being able to let off a Smite or buff a, uh, a unit that's nearby. The Cults of the Legion uh, making a return as the different sub-factions. Some of the things that you might notice are gone and might upset you as a Chaos player. Um, the big one being Death of the False Emperor. That's been removed. Uh, none of the Thousand Suns units have Death of the False Emperor anymore. There's also no more Hateful Assault. So during the Assault phase, you know, you're not going to have that extra plus one attack uh, that you might be used to having. One thing that you'll be happy to know was kept was the malicious volleys rule. So you still are going to get those extra shots with your bolt guns, thankfully. So moving on from some of the detachment abilities, we've also got the Cults of the Legion. Uh, so per detachment, you can choose uh, one of the nine cults to let your Thousand Sons uh, gain access to the benefits of that cult. Each cult is going to have its own spell which every Psyker in the army will automatically know, in addition to any other spells that they know. And you're also going to get access to a unique Warlord trait and a unique Relic. So I'll touch on a couple of these things. Um, starting off with Cult of Mutation. Uh, so they have a Relic that I think would be really cool on something like a Demon Prince or a uh, 
you know, maybe a character that you want to see stuck in combat a little more. Uh, giving them an additional point of strength, toughness, and attack, which, uh, which is really cool. Especially for an army that's not uh, as melee focused. We've got the Cult of Prophecy. Uh, they've got an interesting spell that gives you a fate dice. Um, and that lets you replace a single dice roll with this, uh, with this dice. So you could, you know, exchange a, a wound roll of a 1 for a roll of a 6, if that was what you rolled, for example. Um, Cult of Time. Uh, I could see this being really interesting in a unit or in an army that has a lot of Terminators, for example. Um, it's a spell that will let you regain lost wounds or even bring back a model at full strength. So, you know, if you cast this ability, keeping in mind your uh, Rubric Marine or your Terminator squad, that squad leader is a sorcerer and can cast this on his own unit. So he could bring back a full three wound Terminator each turn in theory, uh, which is really cool. You've also got the Cult of Scheming. Um, Cult of Scheming, they've got a spell that lets a unit uh, fall back, shoot, and charge, uh, which could have a lot of purposes as well. Uh, Cult of Magic, uh, not quite as powerful as they used to be in 8th edition, but they still have some, uh, some good abilities. They've got a Warlord trait here that lets you reroll one of your tests once per Psyche phase, which, which is useful when you're trying to get some, an important spell off. over here we've got the cult of knowledge uh, they've got a warlord trait that will let you reroll ones in the psychic phase which can be quite good as well the cult of change um, they have a spell that will reduce attacks and leaderships so that could be good against a a melee unit that relies on volume of attack uh, you know subtracting one from their attacks could could really uh, you know change the tide uh, my favorite cult right here, the Cult of Duplicity. I think this is probably the most powerful cult in terms of competitive play. Um, that being said, they, they've got an ability that will essentially let you redeploy a unit anywhere on the battlefield as long as you're outside of 9 inches of an enemy unit. This is great, you know, if uh, you shoot an enemy off an objective, but your Terminators, which are slow, they can't reach them, reach them there. You know, they won't get there by the end of the battle. You can just use this spell and have them teleport over to that objective. Um, as long as the enemy's been taken off it, it's it's a great way in terms of getting your guys to move around the battlefield, which is great. And then finally, you've got the Cult of Manipulation. Uh, they've got a really cool relic, which basically lets you capture uh, an enemy character, an enemy model, and have them fight for you, uh, you know, on your side for a little bit. Um, which I think is kind of cool. Everyone likes taking, you know, an enemy hero and using it to beat on their own guys. That's that's pretty cool in my opinion. So moving on to the stratagems. Um, a lot of the stratagems you see here, they're returning from the old book, which is great. Um, there's some very powerful new ones as well. Some that have been modified. Um, we'll touch on some of those. So in the battle tactics section... Uh, there's one here that's really cool, Faded Mutation. This this comes back, this is making a return. This lets you uh, pick a Chaos Spawn unit, and you can choose its Mutated Beyond Reason ability. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Chaos Spawn, every time they fight, they're going to get a random ability. Um, so being able to choose this ability rather than have it be random is, is very beneficial. Um, it's also going to add one to the number of attacks they get to make, which is cool. So Veterans of the Long War uh, is gone. It's being replaced with um, Wrath of the Wronged right here. Uh, so it's gone up a command point. It's 2 CP now. And it's only going to work on an Arcana Astartes Infantry Unit as well. Um, Infernal Fusillade is back. Uh, however, rather than Rubric Marines shooting twice, they're only going to add one to their shots. And uh, Inhuman Savagery, so this has replaced the Zangor Stratagem, and again, rather than fighting twice, um, it's just going to be adding uh, one additional attack, or correction there, you're re-rolling the hit roll, so it's not even as good as that. So they've really, uh, really kind of done the Zangors a little dirty with uh, with that, but frankly, I'm kind of see um, Rubric Marines 
and Scarab will call Terminators step back into the limelight and those uh, those Zangors take a little bit of a back seat. On to the Epic Deed stratagems. These are more focused on our favorite phase being the Psychic phase. Great Sorcerer is back. Uh, had to be one command point to cast an additional spell. You're going to be casting this pretty much every single turn. Uh, really good. Uh, one CP, Warp Regeneration. I think this is a really cool spell. So essentially if you're getting a Psychic Test and it's 9 or more, you can bring back a dead unit or a, or a dead model, uh, which I think is really cool, especially you know in combination with uh, the Cult of Time that I touched, about, touched on before. You kind of have this combo where you're bringing back Terminators uh, from the dead, which I think is really neat. Uh, metaphysical Focus. So this is another ability that lets you take an action and fight, essentially, or shoot, uh, which is really cool. I believe it's shoot. It's uh, Use this stratagem after manifesting a psychic action with an Arcana Astarte Psyker. That unit can attempt to manifest one psychic power this phase. Okay, so you get to cast a psychic power in the same turn that you did an action, which is, which is cool. That's actually better than I even thought. Um, requisition stratagems is pretty typical from what you'd see in other codexes in terms of before the battle starts being able to give uh, a warlord trait or a relic out to one of your heroes. Um, you've also got Aspiring Magister which lets you give one of a couple different relics to a Scarab Occult leader or a um, um, Aspiring Sorcerer from a Rubric Marine squad. Which is pretty cool. Strategic ploys. Um, Risen Rubrique has returned. Uh, Risen Rubrique letting you, uh, before deployment, you know, setting up a Rubric Marine squad somewhere out there on the battlefield uh, can be really great. Uh, Webway Infiltration makes a return, which is good. And this new one that I really like, Inescapable Forewarning. Um, this essentially lets you, if a unit arrives within reinforcements, uh, within 18 of a Thousand Sun Psyker, you'll actually be able to shoot at them, uh, which could be really good, uh, especially with a unit of um, Scarab Occult Terminators. You know, pumping out a whole bunch of AP minus two shots at a unit arriving from reinforcements could be a really strong thing to do. And then war gear. Um, in terms of war gear, uh, an amazing one that I think they've added for one command point, which I think is a steal, is Malefic Scroll. So essentially, after you manifest Smite, you can change it from rather than being D3 mortal wounds to just flat three mortal wounds, which I think, you know, just being able to every turn guarantee those three mortal wounds going through is, uh, I think that's a really good value for a command point. Over here, so we've got the Warlord traits. Um, a lot of the Warlord traits have returned from the previous book. Some of them have gotten a little worse. Uh, Otherworldly Presence, which was one of the most popular ones to take, has been nerfed. Um, it previously was just a flat 3 plus invulnerable save. However, this has now been turned into a once per battle invulnerable save, which is definitely not as exciting. The ones I'd be looking at right now are Undying Form uh, to reduce the damage uh, from each attack coming into your Warlord by one. I think that'd be really cool on something like a Demon Prince. I also like Ether Stride. Adds three to the movement characteristic of the Warlord. And they can uh, declare a charge in the same turn that they fell back. And they can also uh, make a normal move, charge move, advance, or fall back as though it had fly. Personally, I th I'd like to put this on a Terminator Sorcerer, giving them a little bit of additional movement up from their 5 inches um, and letting them fall back and shoot. I like to have a Terminator Sorcerer with a Combi Melta, so being able to fall back, shoot, and then charge in again, you know, cast a Psychic Power, all that stuff, that's really cool to me. Uh, I think uh, I think that'd be a good choice for that. We've also got here Infernal Packs. So these are... Um, in relation to the Infernal Master, which is a new unit for the Thousand Suns. He's a 90-point sorcerer 
who can cast one and deny one, but he can also cast one of these infernal packs during the command phase um, on a roll of a three plus. Some of these, um, you know, again, hits and misses. This is very similar to a Dark Apostle for Chaos Space Marine players. Um, what I think one of the coolest ones is Malefic Maelstorm. So you can select a Thousand Suns unit that's visible to him. And until your next turn, you add one to the strength characteristic of a ranged attack that they get to make. Uh, so that's, you know, that's a pretty cool one to do. Um, another one that I really like, honestly, is just Fires the Abyss. That's just straight up D3 Mortal Wounds. So, you know, you're, you're casting this on a 3+, plus, does D3 Mortal Wounds. And then, you know, you can go ahead and cast Smite with him, do another D3 Mortal Wounds. So that's probably one of my favorites, honestly, is just it's almost like a free Smite on a 3+. Plus. And then, you know, when you go to cast Smite, you don't have to worry about plus one to cast because that doesn't count. So it's kind of a, just a cool way to get out extra mortal wounds. On to the relics. Um, a lot of relics here. A lot of ones uh, designed to replace um, force staves uh, and stuff like that. Um, you've got a really cool pistol here. So I like to put this one to upgrade a... Uh, Rubric Marine Aspiring Sorcerer to give him a little bit of extra oomph to his shooting. Got Pistol 3, Strength 5, AP 2, Damage 2. It's kind of a nice little uh, little thing to use. Um, you've also got Helm of the Demon's Eye. So each time your opponent uses this stratagem, if you're on the battlefield, you can roll a d6 and on a 5 up, you gain a command point. That's great. Um, Umbralific Crystal uh, makes a return. Uh, this used to be called the Dark Matter Crystal, but for all intents and purposes, it's the same thing. You know, getting to redeploy a unit. Flipping the page over here to our Psychic Powers, you'll notice uh, things are a little different from 8th edition. We've uh, lost the Discipline of Zinch, and the Dark Hereticus, Hereticus Discipline has now been changed to the Discipline of Vengeance. Um, so there's nine powers in each uh, Discipline. A lot of the spells from previous are coming back. Um, some with some good changes. One in particular, Zinch's Firestorm. I really like what they've done with this change. Now, if you get an unmodified roll of a 9 plus on your cast, you're going to be doing Mortal Wounds on a 5 up instead of a 6 up. So you're rolling 9 dice, and on every 5 up, it's going to be a Mortal Wound, which is really great. Um, Glamour of Zinch and Weaver of Fates are back. Uh, they're both easier to cast now, which is really cool. Doombolt makes a return. It's both easier to cast and better, in my opinion. Just doing flat three mortal wounds, which is, uh, you know, who can argue with that? It's really cool. One of the new uh, spells that's come in uh, that I think is going to be really good to use is Pyrrhic Flux. Um, what this does is until the end of the turn, you're adding one strength to the characteristic of all your Warp Flamers and heavy warp flamers, which is, you know, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, all those flamers being AP minus two, having an additional point of strength, plus, uh, you know, our version of Veterans of the Long War. I think that could be a really powerful combo. And it's something I definitely want to try out on the battlefield. Uh, Discipline of Vengeance. Okay, a lot of spells are coming back. We're getting our Infernal Gaze back, Prescience is back. Diabolic Strength, Death Hex, Warp Time, and Gift of Chaos. They're all back, albeit under different names. Uh, we do have a couple of new spells. So we've got Empiric Guidance um, right here. So that's going to boost the range of all your Rapid Fire and Heavy Weapons by plus six, which could be good to you know get that extra little bit of reach. There's also Desecration of Worlds. Um, and so basically whenever... If you cast it on a unit, every time they make a move, fall back, advance, or charge, um, you're going to roll a d6 for every model in that unit, and on a 6, they're going to take a mortal wound. So you can imagine any of these big, large horde-type units that want to move around the battlefield. Maybe they have stratagems that let them move in other phases. It's really going to punish you know, maybe something like a big unit of orcs or something like that, which I think is pretty cool. Other than that, though, um, you know, what you're looking at, a lot of the spells haven't changed. They've gotten a little easier to cast. Personally, you know, in my experience with it, been, it's been nice. Like, Doombolt used to be a lot harder to cast. Now it's on a 6. Um, so 
it's just a lot, it's nicer, you know, casting spells, I find a lot of them are succeeding, which is nice. Moving on to the Crusade rules. Um, one thing that's pretty interesting about the Crusade rules is you really, um, you benefit from winning with psychers. Um, if you, you know, essentially succeed with psychers and psyker characters, you'll accumulate these arcane points which are pretty interesting. Um, you can use them to upgrade your heroes and whatnot. One of my favorites here is the Mesmeric Staff. Um, you know, replacing a Force Staff to times two strength, AP two, flat three damage is, is amazing. But I really, like, I really like the fact that it's got the ranged option for strength 10, AP two, damage D3 plus three. That's, uh, that's a pretty hard hitting staff and uh, I'd, I'd like to see that, that used in a Crusade game. A um, little bit of a name generator here if you want to come up with cool Thousand Suns names for your characters. Some nice pictures. I really like these pieces attached to this um, Predator. If anybody knows where these pieces are from, these little extra little bits, uh, you know, let me know in the comments. I'd kind of like to know where they got those from. I'm guessing it's from another kit. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure where they got that. It's pretty cool. So, moving on. Uh, so, the data sheets. Uh, I've touched on this before. Malicious Volleys makes a return. Uh, buffing your bolt guns, which is cool. Uh, teleport Strike and Sorcerer's Master. Teleport Strike, that's just, you know, rules for uh, Terminators setting them up in Deep Strike and using them as reinforcements. Sorceress Master, this just clarifies that when you're casting an ability from uh, a Rubric Marine Squad or a Scarab Occult Terminator Squad, everything is going to be from that squad leader. Uh, if someone wants to deny a power, they have to do it to that squad leader. If you're measuring a distance from a smite, it has to be from your squad leader because they are essentially the only sorcerer in the unit. They're controlling the mindless automatons of the Rubric Marine and the Scarab Occult into battle. So that's that. Kabbalistic Rituals. These are really interesting. Uh, I think it's one of the coolest additions that they made. Essentially what this does is if your whole army, not just one detachment, if the whole army is from the Thousand Suns, then you gain access to Kabbalistic Rituals. Different units will grant you different amount of essentially Cabal points. So for example here, Magnus the Red, each turn he's going to gener generate four Cabal points. Um, whereas something lowly like a Scarab Occult Sorcerer, you know, it's going to generate one Cabal point per turn. Generate the Cabal points, start your Psychic Phase, and all of your Cabal points drain at the end of your Psychic Phase. So you've got to use them all, otherwise you lose them. And they generate in this way every single turn. And you can use these points to sort of buff, um, buff your spells and, you know, get a lot of cool stuff going on. So, you know, for example, you got here down nine points. Um, after taking a psychic test from your army, add two to the psychic test, which is amazing. They've also got one for five to add one to the psychic test. So that's really cool. Um, my favorite one so far has been Malevolent Charge. So when it you successfully cast a psychic power, if it does mortal wounds, which pretty much the majority of your spells are going to be doing, it inflicts an additional D3 mortal wounds in that unit. So you can imagine, you know, taking that Infernal Master, right? Casting his first Pact, do D3 mortal wounds, okay? Then it's the Psychic Phase, go ahead, cast Smite, great, and then you can spend four ball points and do another D3 mortal wounds. So you've just done D3, D3 mortal wounds with a single unit. Uh, using these Cabal Points, which is really great. Going over the data sheets here, uh, starting off with Armin, you know, not much has changed with him. Um, he's still, you know, casting three, denying three. He can be upgraded to his disc. Oh, that's changed. His uh, The Black Staff of Armin, more or less the same. Um, plus three strength, AP minus one, flat three damage. You know, he's not the most competent um, Marine when it comes to close combat, but he definitely makes up for that with the amount of psychic 
powers he can uh, dish out. Um, he does have Arch Sorcerer. Uh, so each time a psychic test is taken for this model, you can reroll that test. So that's basically a blanket reroll for all of his spells, which is great. Thousand Suns Demon Prince, you know, four up invuln. Uh, Lord of the Thousand Suns, so he's granting those rerolls. Pretty much the same uh, classic Demon Prince you knew and love from Eighth Edition. You got the Infernal Master here. He again, nothing very special about his data sheet per se. Uh, he's pretty much your typical sorcerer. Um, he just has that, again, that ability to cast those packs, uh, which we touched on earlier. Uh, I honestly think he's, uh, he's pretty much an auto-include in, uh, in every Thousand Suns army at this point. Especially with how, how cheap he's costed. At 90 points, it's, uh, you know, you're either taking him or another sorcerer, so there's really no reason why you wouldn't want to take an Infernal Master Vice a, uh, a sorcerer. Okay, again, touching on him, regular sorcerer, you know, um, nothing wrong with them. Casting two, denying one, great option, always, 90 points at a steal. Exalted sorcerers are back um, with the reroll aura, just like the Demon Prince or Armin. Uh, you could put them on a disc um, at 100 points, you know, they're still a very reasonably costed model. In terms of the damage output that they can give with their with their spells, um, yep. If you don't want to pay the premium for Armin, you know you're probably definitely going to be including at least one Exalted Sorcerer in your book. Sorcerer and Terminator armor. This is my preferred Sorcerer. Um, you know, I, I'd rather take a Sorcerer and Terminator armor than I would just a normal Sorcerer. The reason is you can deep strike in, uh, teleport strike in this sorcerer and kind of get him to where he needs to be to get those powers off. Uh, it's a very ta gives you a lot of tactical flexibility, which is nice. Cultists make a return. I don't have much to say about them. Zangors are back. Um, pretty much the same Zangors you know and love. This time, just they, they're lacking the stratagem support that they had in the previous edition. Um, I still think that they're a good option to take for holding objectives. And I can't really see a reason why you would want to pick Cultists over the Zangors. They're filling basically the same battlefield role. Uh, albeit with the Zangors being much tougher to remove. Having that 5-up invuln and an extra point of toughness. I, I would always pick the Zangors over a unit of Cultists. Rubric Marines, the poster boys of Thousand Suns, they're back, and you know we got our second wound. So Chaos players rejoice. Um, you know we've been we've been struggling without our extra wound in the face of the Primaris threat. Uh, so now you know we've got that extra wound, we've got that extra attack as well. I suppose that makes up for the lack of hateful assault. Certainly doesn't make up for the lack of death of the False Emperor. That that will not be forgotten. Um, they've also changed the Icon of Flame. So this was kind of a almost pointless upgrade. Uh, it was very, like, very swingy, very niche upgrade before. But now, if you're running an all Thousand Suns army, you are going to always want to include the Icon of Flame on your Rubric Marine squads because it's going to generate an additional Cabal point uh, at the beginning of all your psychic phases. So rather than, you know, making one, they're now going to make two. So you're basically doubling your cabal points in terms of how much your troops are generating. Uh, I've, I've used the cabal points in my games and I think it's something that once you play with cabal points, you're never going to want to play without them. So, you know, I've considered mixing, Rubric or er, Thousand Suns and Demons and stuff like that, but these Cabal points, especially where you can get Rubric Marines counting for two, it's it's a game changer. Um, another important note is now uh, the Aspiring Sorcerer gets a full smite. They're a full-fledged Sorcerer. They're a full Psyker in that Rubric Marine squad leading them into battle. So no longer are you going to have these, like, Weak little one wound smites, you know, coming out. You're getting full smites with your rubric marine squads. Um, you know, that's amazing to me personally. It's it's a huge change. Um, getting 
extra additional cabal points. It's they're a great unit all all around. Um, Arcane Automata, so you're never going to have to take a morale test. The way I play my Thousand Sons is I'm going all Rubric Marines, all Scarab Occult Terminators, and I've yet to roll a single morale check, and it's it's brilliant. All is Dust, okay, it makes a return from the previous codex. Uh, it has not changed. Damage one attacks against you, you're going to get plus one to your save, and... Uh, you're going to ignore the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. Speaking of heavy weapons, uh, so the Soul Reaper Cannon has received a small buff. It's now Strength 6, AP 3, Damage 1, uh, you know, which is respectable. Uh, I could definitely see a lot of people wanting to upgrade at least one, one Rubric Marine to have a Soul Reaper Cannon uh, per squad. The Hellbrute here, um, you know, probably a pretty good choice. Uh, now that a lot of the Forge World Dreadnoughts, they're costing an additional command point to take. So I feel like a lot of people are going to be looking back at the classic Hellbrute. Monstrous Resilience is an interesting ability. You're subtracting one from the damage characteristic of that attack. Um, and it also has the Frenzy roll. So each time you make an attack, if it has seven or fewer wounds remaining, you're going to re-roll a wound roll of a one. You know, for the points, I, I like the Hellbrute. Um, you know, it's not bad. Not a bad option at all. Scarab Occult Terminators. Uh, so these guys have also received some good buffs. Uh, again, we've got the additional wound, which is nice, bringing them up to three wounds and the additional attack for three attacks apiece. The biggest um, upgrade to, these, to this unit over the previous edition is the introduction of the Prosperine Kopesh. So it's a melee weapon that they've been given which is plus one strength ap minus three flat damage two that is amazing personally I, I think that is a great great addition to this unit because they were sorely lacking uh ability in melee and now this is a unit where frankly you know they're they're almost good in all phases shooting an ap minus two with a whole bunch of uh combi bolter shots Psychic ability, they've got a full Psyker as their squad leader. You can cast a full Smite. And then you're also charging in with two damage attacks, uh, which, you know, it's, it's really good. I'd, I could definitely see a lot more of these hitting the battlefield. Zangor Shaman makes a return. He is more or less the same. He's lost his... Um, he used to have a little elixir that let him reroll a failed test at the beginning. That's been replaced... Uh, so with a little bit of a buff. So while a friendly Bray or Enlightened unit is within six, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, add one to that attack's hit roll. So you're basically adding plus one. You know, he's become basically a little bit more of a miniature lord for Zangors and Bray units, which is kind of cool. Still a Psyker. You know, he can cast one, deny one, which isn't bad. Zangor Enlightened, they're back. Um, in the fast attack slot, which is neat. Uh, not a whole lot has changed. Their Fate Caster Great Bows have seen a little bit of a, a small change. So being Strength 5, AP 1, Damage 1. And each time you select a target for this weapon, you can ignore Lookout Sir. Um, each time an attack is made with this weapon, unmodified hit roll of a 2 plus is always successful. Um, so, you know, they're a little more accurate, a little bit better at... Um, Maybe taking out characters, which is pretty cool. Guided by Fate um, is still here, so unmodified hit rolls of a 6 are always going to wound the target. Chaos Spawn, they're back. Not much has changed. We still have access to the Faded Mutation Stratagem, which is cool. Um, I'm interested in playing with these guys a little bit. I've got a couple ones unpainted that I want to try out. Um, you know, they still don't have an invuln save, but it is a lot of wounds to chew through. And they're costed pretty aggressively at uh, 23 points a model. It's, uh, it's an interesting fast attack option, to be sure. Chaos Rhinos. These, you know, normally they're, you know, just your typical Rhino. But Thousand Suns, we got a little bit of extra spice onto our Rhinos, which is pretty cool. So the first thing that's interesting is their standard weapon is an Inferno Combi Bolter. 
this didn't really used to be the case. I'm pretty sure you had to like upgrade the Rhino so that it had the Inferno combi bolter shots. But now, you know, you're getting those built into the profile. You can have two combi bolters on the Rhino, so you're spitting out a whole bunch of AP minus two shots. And the cherry on top is because it has the Arcana Astartes keyword, you're getting a five plus invulnerable save on your Rhino. And, you know, I'll, I'll say this, like my first game with the Codex was against Chaos Knights. And, you know, my Rhinos, which are holding all my troops, they survived a lot longer just because against these thermal cannon shots, I'm getting invulns. And, you know, you're getting lucky rolling a couple five-up saves. That's the difference between a whole squad getting wiped out and onto the battlefield versus, you know, that transport's still intact, still able to move your troops to where they got to go. It's, uh, it's very interesting. And that's just a Rhino for starters. You got to understand that that Arcana Astartes keyword is plastered all over Forge World vehicles as well as the Land Raider in this this codex. So, you know, if you can think of a vehicle that does not have an invuln and it's going to be severely improved by having an invuln, you know, you might want to think about a Thousand Suns detachment. Going over. Uh, the Mutalith Vortex Beast. Very interesting unit here. It's got a lot of different abilities that can be used. These have been changed up from uh, the previous codex. Uh, some very interesting things. My favorite here, Turbulent Discharge. Uh, determine the closest enemy unit with an 18 visible and roll 1d6. On a 2 to 4, they take d3 mortal wounds and on a 5 up, they're just going to take another flat 3 mortal wounds. You'll notice that as a theme in this book, you know, just the flat 3 mortal wounds. It's, uh, I think, you know, if you can find a way to get those flat 3 mortal wounds out consistently turn after turn, it's a devastating strategy. And, you know, this is just another tool in your toolbox to, to help accomplish that. You've got your typical, you know, Chaos Space Marine vehicles, Chaos Vindicator, Chaos Land Raider. Not a whole lot to say about these guys. Um, they're fairly standard from what uh, you would remember from previous Chaos books. Um, the only addition, like I mentioned, you know, now they've got a 5-plus invulnerable save. So especially on something like the Land Raider, Having a 5 plus invuln, which can then be buffed to a 4 plus uh, via Weaver of Fates, you know, that's a pretty, that's a pretty interesting thing to, to think about. Um, these big, heavy vehicles that normally don't have invulns and are so weak to AP shooting, I mean, now you don't really have to worry about that. It almost completely mitigates the downside of something like a Chaos Land Raider, which is very cool to see. Moving into uh, the Demon Engines. Um, Chaos Defiler is back, as is the Forge Fiend and Mauler Fiend. Uh, their stats have all kind of received a little bit of buffs in terms of their weaponry. It's gotten a little bit better, which is good, good to see. Um, you'll notice, though, that these do not have the Arcana Astartes keyword, and it's, they all have the 5 plus invuln just built into their profile. And the Infernal Regeneration as well, where they're going to regain those wounds at the beginning of your turn. Okay, uh, a couple more heavy support options. We've got two different types of predators, and these being sort of the typical uh, predators that you would see in Codex Chaos Space Marines with the two variants, one with the LAS cannons and the other one with the Predator Auto Cannon. Again, um, probably worth a look considering that they have the 5 up invuln. I could see a couple of Chaos Predator Annihilators being a great way to solve the anti-tank problem that Thousand Suns armies often have, not really having a lot of anti-tank. Um, so I think a couple of these with the five up invuln could be a really great solution. Helldrake's back um, seems a lot better than, than previous edition. Um, it's got got some pretty interesting uh, things. Adding one to attacks that against uh, other units that fly, as well as the improved uh, Hades auto cannon. Strength 8, AP minus 2, flat damage 2. Uh, I think that Helldrakes could be a really great option for mobility on the battlefield and sort of, you know, getting at those units that are in your opponent's rearward lines. Could be very cool. And, of course, last but not least, Magnus the Red, the Crimson King, returns with a new and updated profile. Uh, so let's go through this. So, uh, obviously, access to Kabbalistic Rituals. Demon Primarch, uh, so he must be your Warlord if, uh, if he's in the game. 
He's also got uh, the aura. So core units within six can reroll rolls of one. He's also Lord of the Planet of Sorcerers. So in your command phase, you can select one friendly sun, friendly Thousand Suns core or character unit within six of the model. And until the start of my next command phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, you can reroll the hit roll. Um, personally, that one's a little weird to me. I kind of miss his old ability where you could reroll psychic tests. Uh, that was seemingly a little better for me. Um, he's got a 4-up invuln, and he will never suffer from perils of the warp. That's cool. Gaze of Magnus. Uh, so this is back. This is his super smite ability. Each time you manifest the smite psychic power, you inflict d6 mortal wounds instead of d3. And you're going to do 3d3 mortal wounds instead of d6 if the result is 11 or more. So that's, uh, you know, not too bad. Um, a little bit worse, may maybe a little bit worse, maybe a little more consistent. It used to be 2d6 um, instead of d6, but, uh, you know, we'll see. Maybe it ends up being more consistent, because with the d6, you could just roll a 1. So, we'll see. Uh, so he has Unearthly Power, which uh, lets him reroll a Psychic Test taken for him. And uh, each time you make a Psychic Test or deny the Witch Test, you can add 1 to the result. And uh, if he's got more than 10 wounds remaining, you can add 2 to the result. So it's good to see that that power is back. He's going to you know, have that plus 2 most of the time, if not a plus 1. Um, I always thought that a lot of the utility of Magnus came from giving those rerolls to your Psychers. Um, so I think that he's really lost a lot of utility in that respect. Uh, but, you know, with that said, he's a very fluffy and flavorful choice to include in an army. And if you want to play with those big models, um, you know, look no further. Okay, and then over here you've got all the different points values for your units. Um, they're laid out a lot better than the previous codex where, you know, you, you have the unit and uh, all the upgrades are listed right there. So building a list is pretty simple. And across different weapon profiles, you know, quick reference sheet for that, which is good. I really like this here. There's a glossary and a reference, and the reference actually includes, you know, the rules are right here. It doesn't just reference you to another page. It's all right here. So you kind of just bookmark this page, and, uh, you know, if you're worried about forgetting one of your Kabbalistic rituals or something like that, it's it's all right here for you to read, which is uh, which is great. So yeah, overall, um, I'm pretty happy with this codex. It's a return to you know Marines, Terminators, sort of what made Thousand Suns iconic and very cool, in my opinion. Um, people that are a fan of Zangors and kind of those weird mu mutation stuff, you might not be as happy. Uh, there's definitely less support for the Zangors that there was in the previous codex. They're certainly not... Not as powerful as they were before. My one critique of the book is, where's the love for our demon engines? Um, you know, and there's not a lot of synergy that I can see between demon engines and the sorcerers. They almost feel like they're just tacked on. You know, and same thing almost with like the predators and some of these CSM vehicle units. They're they're sort of tacked on, and I would really like to see them kind of come into their own identity when it comes to Thousand Sons and how they play with the army. But, you know, I could be wrong on that. Maybe maybe we'll see strategies develop that really, you know, really emphasize using Demon Engines. And, you know, if you can think of ways to integrate Demon Engines into a Thousand Sons army, feel free to leave that in the comments. I'd be very interested to see what you guys have to say. But with all that, that is the Thousand Sons Codex Review. Sponsored by... <laughs> Hey, if you like that video and want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Did you know that Armin made his own wine back on Prospero? Like legit made his own wine? He made his own wine. It's supposed to be this dark, rich wine that he'd swirl in a glass and drink from. If you know the name of Armin's wine, comment below.